What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going through First or Second Samuel chapter 4. Hallelujah. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The, the death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us, and we receive eternal life. Through him, that our sin is taken away, and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. And here comes one of my gang talking right now. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. And ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. Pray for my father. Oh, he has an infection in, in his abdomen. Pray for Lynette, she has cancer. And pray for my brother. Oh, his name is slipping my mind right now. The Romanian guy that I talked about in the last video and his children. But, uh, you know what? I was going to bring up this gang stalking thing. How they've been harassing me tonight. And I know it sounds crazy to most people, you know. But unless you ex experience it, it probably is going to sound crazy. But, uh, you know. I'll just leave it alone right now. But you can do your own research. There is a lot of disinformation out there, by the way. But I have videos on it. But anyway. 2 Samuel chapter 4. And uh, it's a short chapter. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now when Ishbosheth, Saul's son, heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he lost courage, and all Israel was disturbed, as Joab killed Abner. And I will say, probably won't be too many more cars the rest of this video, but it was right, right in the beginning when I was preaching the gospel, when multiple cars come by. No cars come by in the last 20, 30, 30 minutes. Saul's son had two men who were commanders of bands. The name of one was Banna, the name of the other, Rechab. Sons of Remen, the Berethite, of the sons of Benjamin. Now this next verse, or then this next uh, verse and a half, is in parentheses, so maybe it wasn't in the, in the original translation, but it says, uh, For Beeroth is also considered part of, part of Benjamin, and the Berethites fled to Gitaim and have been aliens there until this day. So uh, I guess the Berethites may, have not have, may not have been a bloodline Benjamites, but they were considered a part of Benjamin. And that's who uh, Ishbosheth's uh, two main commanders who were left after Abner died, that's where they were from. That, that was their family line. Now, Jonathan, Saul's son, another one of, uh, so Ishbosheth was Saul's son. So uh, this was his nephew that is speaking about. Ishbosheth's nephew. Ishbosheth's nephew. Now, Jonathan, Saul's son, or not, now Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son crippled in his feet. He was five years old when the report of Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. He was five when they were killed. And his nurse took him 
took him up and fled. And it happened that in her hurry to flee, he fell and became lame. Oh, who knows if he'll, he broke his leg or or what. And this car always comes by too. And they be, they be hiding their faces and stuff. They will, they'll, uh, they'll put their hands, as they're riding by, they'll put their hands up like this or something like that to hide the face. And it's crazy. At least a lot of them do. So when Saul and Jonathan were killed, Ishbosheth was five, and his nurse, nurse uh, took him and fled. And he fell and became lame. I guess he probably broke his leg or something. And his name was Meshibbeth, uh, Mephibosheth. And also a drone flying directly over top of me. It's crazy, no. But maybe I'll just uh, leave all that that alone, you know. I just say it because I'm doing this video and I'm experiencing this stuff, so I uh, I bring it up. Not a regular plane, is it? You know, a drone plane. And I know this because they follow me. I, I can't go. I can't ride down the road at night without looking over to my side and one flashing, going, flying right alongside me. It's crazy. Because I'm a servant of Jesus. Not because I'm doing anything wrong. Because I'm a target. Because I'm a threat to the new world order, to the beast kingdom. But anyway, let's continue. So the sons of Rimen, the Berethite, Rechab, Rechab, and Banna departed and came to the house of Ishwasheth in the heat of the day while he was taking his midday rest. They came to the middle of the house as if to get wheat, and they struck him in the belly. And Rechab and Banna, his brother, escaped. Now, when they came into the house, as he was lying on his bed in his bedroom, and he was lame, he couldn't even get up and run, he couldn't really defend himself too much. Now when they came in the house, as he was lying on his bed in, in, in his bedroom, they struck him and killed him and beheaded him. And they took his head and traveled by the way of the Arabah all night. Then they brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron and said to the king, Behold the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who has sought your life. Thus Yahuwah has given my lord the king vengeance this day on Saul and his descendants. David answered Rechab, and Banna, his brother, sons of Rem and the Berethite, and said to them, David said, As Yahuwah lives, who has redeemed my life from all distress, hallelujah, and he's redeemed me from so much, so much, uh, not, not only my sins, but from attacks of the enemy, from hits on my life, from attempts to set me up for major crimes. He has delivered me, hallelujah. David said, as Yahuwah lives, who has redeemed my life from all distress. Hallelujah. When one told me, saying, behold, Saul is dead, and thought he was bringing me good news, I seized him and killed him in Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. Because David wouldn't even kill Saul himself. How much more when wicked men have killed a righteous man Ishbosheth, in his house on his bed. Shall I not now require his blood from your hand and destroy you from the earth? Then David commanded the young men, and they killed them. The two men who uh, killed Ishbosheth. And they killed them and cut off their hands and feet and hung them up beside the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth. And buried it in the grave of Abner in Hebron. And that's the end of 2 Samuel 4. You know, God bless the people who harass me and persecute me. God bless them. 
Lord, I pray that I pray that they would come to faith. I pray that they would come to pray that they would repent from all this wickedness. I pray that they would realize what they're doing is wrong. And they would truly turn to you. And openly I forgive the people who are commanding it. I forgive the demons, the fallen angels, and Satan who are commanding this stuff. I forgive them. You know, almost on a daily basis now, people ride by me and make themselves known. Like I, I was in a, I was a, in a Taco Bell parking lot earlier today. And, you know, I went, I went into the restaurant, got some food, and I came back out and somebody was parked right next to me. And uh, as soon as I finished eating, and as soon as I turned, started turning the key, I wasn't even starting it to leave, but I turned the key to crack my window. And the guy next to me, right when I did that, started pulling out. And there's also somebody else in the parking lot, I believe, keep it an eye. Uh, at least most likely, but two minutes later, uh, I see a truck pulling in, and I can tell. I could tell by the by the guy, by his appearance. I could tell, some type of an agent. So he pulls, pulls into the Taco Bell, like he's about to go through through the drive-through. Drives around the whole store, and drives back out, and. Uh, as he passes in front of me, basically I was parked on the side of the parking lot, uh, this part of the parking lot, so so he pulled in like this, came around, drove around the whole Taco Bell, and then drove, then drove back around and passed in front of me. And when he passed in front of me, he was like this for like five seconds, the whole time he passed in front of me, doing the one-eye symbolism. You know, it's crazy. These uh, see, Illum Illuminati, <laughs> these Freemasons. Many of which are, you know, many of which are cops. And speaking of that, I've had uh, multiple of them ride past me in the last hour or two. When they're normally not out here. But anyway, um, you know, we live in a crazy world. We live in a crazy time. You know, we as Christians are targets. We as true servants of God are targets. Whether you realize it or not, if, you are true, if you're a true servant of God and you're awake on a lot of issues, whether you realize it or not, you're a target. You may be persecuted. You, you may be gang stalked like I am and don't even realize it right now. But God, is my, God has opened my eyes to so much. Hallelujah. All glory to him. Praise God. And he has protected me from so much. And they hate the fact that I, I am willing to speak out about this and not afraid to Talk about this stuff. They hate it. And so they go harder. So I go harder for the kingdom. Because that's what truly matters. But, you know, Satan likes to keep us distracted. And that's what he's done a lot with me. You know, uh, it's easy to get caught up in the things of this life. Especially when you're struggling, when you're when your car is breaking down, when you you know you don't have a job, and and it seems like everything's going wrong, it's easy to focus on that and not focus on focus on the kingdom. So let's focus on the kingdom, no matter what. Let's overcome no matter what. Let's keep working for God. Let's keep spreading the words. Keep spreading the gospel, no matter what. Let's stay focused on Him and stay in His Word. That's the most important thing. We're living in the last days. We have a couple years more, max. Max. And it looks like it's about to rain out of nowhere. I don't even think it's supposed to rain. But, you know, that's a whole other thing. They can uh, manipulate weather through research harp, you know. And I'm not saying that's what ha what's happening right now, but... Uh, but yeah, it's starting to rain, but let's be right with God. Let's be ready. Let's spread the word. Let's focus on him. 
And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Give your life to Jesus today. Repent and believe the gospel. This is the beast kingdom that I'm speaking about. This is the anti, I mean, the final beast kingdom. This is the antichrist kingdom. Their servants that are out here harassing me, surveilling me. But Jesus is coming soon. He's coming for his people. Don't bow down to the beast. Give your life to Jesus today. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, and you truly turn to him and ask him for forgiveness, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. We'll give you life to Jesus today. That's the end of Second Samuel 4. Thank you all for tuning in. Love you all. Shalom.